Sunday morning, Viktor Frankl's uh, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, one of the best sellers of all time. And uh, after having survived the concentration camp, he continued his uh, profession as a psychiatrist. He went to the United States and he found that the key to happiness is to have a meaning in your life, that there's no inherent meaning, but it's to, to be striving towards a meaningful goal. And he said that the people who survived the concentration camps were not those who were the strongest uh, or the physically most fit, but those who kept having the desire to live for something that they believed in. There's the psychiatrist. He found that the, what helps people out of depression and mm -hmm. is to have a purpose that you believe in. There's no inherent meaning to this life. We're here, we get born, we live it up, we have problems, and then we die. There's no, no written meaning, you know, the meaning of life. You make it. And one way of making it is to have a purpose that you aspire to. And it's an external goal, like an Ithaca that you want to reach, but it's also an internal goal, like I aspire to become a better person. I aspire to be more confident. I aspire to empower myself and others. Uh, it doesn't have to be an external goal. A mix is nice uh, because you can uh, find external. You can have external goals, uh, but uh, once you reach there, you're still not happy. So there's that missing link. I believe we have to have both internal goals of the type of person you want to be, all the time keep improving yourself, and at the same time have a goal, an external goal that makes your life meaningful. So that's what a little prelude to our discussion today. And again, we use, uh, using my method, ethos, pathos, logos. Uh, the filtering system says, is this outcome that I want, is this dream that I have aligned with who I am, my integrity, my truth? Uh, is it something I'm passionate about, the pathos part? Is it something that I my why, do I have a deep why? You have to, to know your why. They say if your why doesn't make you cry, <laughs> it's not strong enough, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, you might say, I wanna open a, a business. Okay, what's the why? The why has to make you cry. You say, to put my children through school. You know, I want them to go to the best universities. This is my why. I'm gonna work from day to night, to make that you have to have a very strong why because you will have so many obstacles along your path that if you don't have a deep why you will you will you will not be unshakable which is like the vision this is what we're working on today the vision the external manifestation very concrete what will it look like what will it smell like what will it sound like what will it feel like to be, to have manifested. You know, it's like three years from now, I will be living in New York, in uh, the village. Uh, I'm going to be uh, an author working for a publishing house. I'm gonna be making, you know, how much per year. I'll do, I'll be going to the gym. Uh, really like, think like, um, producer of a film. Let's take it a little more creatively. Imagine you were the producer of your your life movie. Where will you, your heroine, where will you set the heroine of your life movie three years from now? Your hair, and not only one scenario, I want you to come up with one or two scenarios or even three. Yeah, it, because a lot of people, people, they don't know, they have a dilemma. They're like, should I do that? Should I move to New York? Or should I move to Berlin? Or should I marry this guy? Or should I marry that guy? Like a lot of people I've, in their life, they, they come to my seminar when they're not 100% sure. So I'm like, try on various uh, scenarios. We're creating scenarios here. You have to make a leap five to 10 years into the future and say, it's 10 years from now. I have left my job in the city and I'm living on a Greek island. I'm working as a digital nomad. 
and next year I might be in Thailand and after that I might go to South America. Either way, you're working from your laptop. So say it in the present moment. I'm working from my laptop. I'm living on a Greek island. I wake up in the morning. Uh, I start looking at my emails. Uh, around midday, I have meetings with clients. I take a swim. And then around the evening, again, I have clients who call me from the United States and we discuss all the details. I love my life living in Greece. I love the weather. I love the food. I love the lifestyle. I have managed to attract a mate. I'm having a really good relationship with um, a lovely person and we get along. We live in a house that's near the sea. It's walking distance from the sea and I have a view to the sea and I really love my life. That's scenario number one. Now try scenario number two. So I'm still living in New York City. I haven't left my job. I've moved up the corporate ladder and I'm uh, making X amount of money. I don't really like the lifestyle, but given the fact that I get to travel a lot through my job, it equals out. And yes, I am living uh, with my boyfriend or girlfriend and we have a good time. She's the right person for me. Uh, I'm more mature and I get to enjoy my relationship more than ever. I go to the health club two or three times a week and um, my hobby is playing tennis and mountain climbing. So that's the second scenario. Now you might have a third scenario, anything you desire. All right, you just describe it either in written form or in an interview type situation. You can even have some friend interview you. And this way you will clearly define the three scenarios. And I recommend that you give each of these scenarios a title, okay? The one may be, you know, digital nomad um, finds love. The, the second one might be New York hustler, you know, and the third one, whatever it is. So once you have those two, three scenarios that you've been playing around with in your mind for a while, now it's time to pass them through the filter of ethos, pathos, and logos. Take each of them and ask yourself these questions, noting down the answers, uh, either written or again in video form if you like talking about it. So, what are the questions related to ethos? One is, does it reflect my character, my core values, and my personal mission statement? Give yourself some time to be truthful and answer to that. If not, where exactly does it deviate and what effect will that deviation have on my integrity, prospects, and overall life experience? That's quite a deep question. Third, does my choice have integrity? Be positive here, but also realistic. Remember, to thy own self be true. And a fourth question is, related to ethos, am I ready to change my life if that's what it takes to make that scenario happen? And will I be happy making those changes, given that there will be some challenges involved? And the last question, who will your vision make you become? What does the vision of Ithaca do to the hero? How will that particular scenario transform you? Is that who you want to become? Carl Jung said that the goal is important only as an idea. The essential thing 
is the opus which leads to the goal. That is the goal of the lifetime. So understand that when you choose a goal, it will transform you. And you have to really see if that's the person you want to become. So those are all the questions related to ethos. Now let's go to the questions related to pathos. And you will ask them in all three scenarios. The first question with pathos is, what undesired changes must I make that go against my grain, desired lifestyle, or way of doing things? Does it take me out of my comfort zone? Because remember, pathos has all to do with your emotions. Are you emotionally prepared to make all those changes? Two, what is my greatest fear or concern, discomfort or uneasiness regarding this particular scenario? Three, what other emotions does it inspire in me? Four, what do I really love about this particular scenario? Five, will this scenario really bring more meaning into my life? Does it have a why? And six, on a scale from one to 10, how excited and moved are you about this scenario? Okay. You should really feel like a hell yeah, I'm going to do it. If you don't have that oomph, that enthusiasm, that emotion, that should be a very big indicator because without emotion, enthusiasm, it can't really be materialized. Now let's look at the questions related to logos, which is logic and reason. One, does this scenario actually raise my quality of life? And if so, how? Two, what does this scenario mean for me financially? Do I have a clear understanding of the implications and consequences of this choice? Three, what things, situations, or lifestyle habits will I need to change? Make a specific list. Four, what will these changes affect except for me? Perhaps family members, friends, or other stakeholders. Five, whose approval or consent do I need to proceed with this scenario? And will that be easy to get? Am I prepared to not get the consent? Seven, do I have a clear plan or strategy? What are the specific milestones for creating this scenario? Does it depend on external circumstances or do I have reasonable control over this process? How can I minimize the risk? So this is like a risk management sort of question. Nine, what are the greatest obstacles for manifesting this scenario? Here you have to be all grown up about it and really look at it head on and look at those obstacles uh, in order to realize that scenario. Once you have completed answering all those questions, now you can proceed to the second phase where you make like a mind movie of the scenarios that interest you. If you still haven't concluded from the, all those questions to one scenario, it's okay, make two mind movies. If you don't know how to video edit, um, you can make a slide presentation. And what is this? This is a visual representation of the scenarios, okay? This is where you tar take pictures, use Photoshop, and make a kind of collage of the life scenario. Make it as, as alive as you can. 
a, a real visual representation of your future life scenario. Make sure that you cover all areas of your life, including career, relationships, playtime and hobbies, uh, family and friends, um, your faith, um, any aspects of your life should be in this collage, in this mind movie, this visual representation. So by now you should really have a clear scenario. If you haven't already concluded to which scenario you want, you need to refine those, mo those mind movies. And if you haven't already done this interview, uh, you should so that you can really conclude which of these scenarios suits you. And when I say interview, I mean have a friend interview you as if you are already there. So answer the questions. They will say, what is your lifestyle like? What do you like about your work? What do you hate about your work? Um, what are the challenges you face? Just as if someone were interviewing you in your future life scenario. So once you have all that information cleared, you are ready to plot your path. And this entails a flow chart. All right, a flow chart is where you have your telos and you put a date on it. The scenario has been realized fully by the year 2025 or whatever date you want to put on it. You must have a specific date. And then the other side of the flow chart is I am here now. I'm, I'm living in New York City, okay? So how are you gonna get from New York City to the Greek island scenario, okay? The flow chart is just putting down the milestones of your journey. What are the steps you're going to take the short, medium, and long-term steps you're going to take to get there. So once you have it all plotted out, you make the decision, you, you really commit to that scenario, and you, you go for it. You go for it. And you, you, you use all your energy to manifest that scenario according to your plan. Basically, it's a strategic understanding of your future life scenario. I hope that's been useful. Make sure you look at the exercise in the book if it's still not clear to you. And go ahead and make your strategy here and now.